don't let our fancy backdrop fool you. We're not actually shooting this out in the middle of the desert. Um, JJ, you've got to tell us about PG-35 VQ. This is an insane display. Yeah, I think this is going to become, quote unquote, the new benchmark for gaming enthusiasts when it comes to gaming monitor. The previous uh, PG-34 uh, series monitor was really kind of the benchmark for an ultra-wide, high-performance monitor. But I think a lot of users, as we continue to offer higher and higher refresh rates and then HDR, they were like, we want that same class monitor, but we want it now with HDR. We want it with high refresh rate. And so now with the uh, PG-35 VQ, we're going to be offering insane specs. So this is 3440 by 1440, wide color gamut. You're going to have HDR 1512 zones here, G-Sync, and overclockable up to 200 hertz. And to top it all off, we decided to just throw in an ESS Saber DAC built into the unit to be able to give you some amazing audio experience so that regardless of whatever you're connecting to, uh, if you don't have a great audio solution, you're going to have one not only to have great visuals, but a great audio experience when you pair that course with your headset or your speakers. And so it's absolutely just, I think, a beautiful, immersive, great display. And of course, has all the hallmarks in terms of all our customization options in terms of our on-screen display, our custom T-Con controller, which is for low input latency performance. I mean, it's just utterly an awesome dream display. So if you're looking for the best of the best, uh, this is probably going to become the new benchmark for a lot of enthusiasts when they're talking about building a high-end gaming rig and they want to pair it with the best display they can. Now, what were some of the challenges? We, you know, it took us a while to make that change to ultra wide, yeah. then combining some of those other technologies, HDR and faster frame rates. Yeah. It, like, I feel like we're now starting to put all those pieces together. I mean, yeah. we are, literally, I'm standing right in front of the perfect example of that. Yeah. How, how did ASUS go about sort of deciding on what that that path looked like to get to this point here. Yeah, so it's it's a very uh, lengthy, laborious process. I mean, there's a lot of validation that has to go with, with the panel manufacturer, so mm -hmm. trying to be able to get a panel that can reach those operational speeds with consistency at a yield that you want. Right. Then you have to work on very specialized algorithms for, let's say, the lighting technology to be able to hit the peak brightnesses. You have to work on managing thermal performance because when you're talking about 1,000 nits, 512 zones, a lot to manage there. So there's a lot of different factors that we look at at different levels to be able to reach the level of performance to really make sure that the experience is just that good uh, for a panel that with this type of specification. So um, it's been a, definitely a long time coming, but we're really excited about having this in the not too distant future. Because it's here now. Yeah. And I, I'm going to play with it as soon as this camera's off.